Welcome to The John Lee Show. In this episode, I want to explore the mindset of excellence. I want to get into the minds of world-class athletes and find out what it is they do on a daily basis, how they think and how they handle discipline, failure and focus. And I have my very special guest, Olympian John Herbert, who is a Commonwealth gold medalist and competed in the Olympics three times. And I want to really get into his mind and find out what it really takes to be world class. So let's find out what John Herbert has to say about being excellence. So today I'm with John Herbert, three times competing in the Olympics, Commonwealth gold medalist and mentor to world class athletes. John, welcome to the show. Nice to see you again, John. No, one of the things I love about you, John, is you have this ability to not only be world class, but pass on this world class ability to others. And you know, a lot of people, when they want to be the best at something, you know, the general mindset is, yeah, I want to be the best. They try, and they get to a point where they kind of give up. And I know you've seen a lot of people, and you've put a lot of people through that journey, and you've seen people give up and try, give up and try. What do you think the most important element that people need to really drive to that world class status? Um, Well, I think when somebody comes to that stage that they're thinking of giving up, Mm. they just need some hope, Mm. yeah, and um, I'd like to think that when I deal with those kind of characters, Mm. that you know, you plant some seeds and you show them some positives in Mm. in what they're doing, because athletes at, or anybody at elite Mm. level, Mm. at times they have doubts in their head, especially Mm. when things go wrong. and they always look at the negatives. So even if something goes wrong, mm. you pull it back, mm. that scenario, and you look for some positive points, mm. and those are the seeds that you plant, mm. and those are the things that can perhaps give someone some hope. Mm. I mean, when, when you were training for the Olympics, I mean, I, I know a lot of Olympics, a lot of my friends are, are, are Olympians like yourself, and I see the, the level of commitment in the training. And you know, some people look and they go, you're crazy, like training every single day, putting your body through so much pain. Why did you do it? Why? <laughs> um, I think the carrot is that for every athlete or every sports person, mm. um, the Olympics is the pinnacle. Mm. Yeah? And everybody, you have a four year cycle, mm. or even an eight year cycle, mm. or even a 12 year cycle. Wow. And, um, the objective is to, first of all, to train your body, mm. train your mind, train your spirit mm-hmm. um, to achieve that goal. Mm. And that goal is to A, make the Olympics mm. and perhaps, if you're fortunate enough, mm. to get into a final and win a gold medal or an Olympic medal. Wow. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and that, for most people, is just the one thing mm. that drives you. You know, um, when you look at the numbers of how many billion people there are on the planet, mm. you know, the, the, the Olympics is like a unique club mm. where, you know, only, you know, less than 1% of the population of the world experience that, that party, mm. as it would be. Mm. It, it's interesting because I, I see a lot of, um, a lot of similarities to, to, you know, professional world-class sports people and world-class entrepreneurs, they, they tend to think the same. It's like they drive, drive, they focus, 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 and you know, like you say, they, they only have this one thing on their mind, it's like you want to be the best that you can be. Mm-hmm. And I guess when you are competing in the, in, in the Olympics, you go through certain trainings, and you, know, you, you need external help. Like in business, we always look for mentors. I mean, is, 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 is it the same when you're competing in the Olympics as well? Well, uh, some people are fortunate. I mean, uh, they usually say, well, most businessmen or business women, you know, they always say that their their partner is the person that's supporting them in the bank, you know, right. or they're a team. And what you find is that, you know, when you first set out, it's probably just yourself. Mm. You know, you have this drive, mm. and then you're if you're if you're lucky enough, you may find a coach, mm. or along the way, you might find a mentor mm. that's going to encourage you. Mm. Um, and most athletes will. They'll kind of, they'll find a coach that they can work with. Mm. And that coach sometimes becomes their mentor, Mm -hmm. their dad, their mom, you know, everything. Because if you think about it, most athletes might spend each day anything between four to five hours with their coach. Wow. Yeah? Yeah. Who in turn is the person that they're going to speak to about absolutely everything. Mm. And I know that most of the athletes that perhaps I I have worked with or have been fortunate to work with, elite athletes, Mm. 
they share everything with me. Mm. You know, when they're going through their problems with their boyfriend or girlfriend, to you know, um, the girls might tell you when they're going to ha when they're going to have this their cycle. Mm. The guys, you know, um, they they'll, they'll share all kinds of things, problems with their girl, you know, with their girlfriends, mm. you know, all those kind of manner of things come, it comes up. You speak about nutrition, <coughs> weight training, everything's got to be planned out, mm. yeah? Um, and as a result, what happens is you do become this kind of almost father figure, mm. mentor, um, and you assist them with any problems that they have. Mm. So who's been who's been one person? Or I mean, you've mentored uh, quite a lot of people, but who's been one person that's really stood out for you? That that you think, yeah, you know, I did a really good job there. Um, there are a few that that come to mind, um, but probably, um, well, I think probably I've had a few what I would call um, rough diamonds. Mm -hmm. um, Philip Sidhu probably is one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, after Philips came Jay Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose m in many ways, uh, Jade probably, because, mm. you know, she was this very feisty character. She, she knew everything before she knew it. Mm. She was one of those people who would push you and question everything. Mm. You know, at first it's because she didn't trust you. Mm. And then when she did learn to trust, mm -hmm. um, when she had a, when she had problems or doubts, you know, she would come to me and speak to me about them. Very honest, honest character. Mm. And as she as she's grown, and obviously she's a big woman, mature woman now, retired. Mm. You know, she for me achieved some things on the track, mm. which was great. Mm -hmm. But the person that she became outside the track, mm. you know, for me is a is a real success story. Wow. You know. Wow. So for, for, for the, the people watching this who have a mentor, um, you know, I, I coach and mentor a lot of people as well, mm. you know, and uh, you, you tend to get some people that want you as a mentor, but they don't want to take the advice of, of a mentor. It's almost like they want to go against everything you want to teach them mm. and they have to go make their own mistakes first and then they go, hey, you know yeah, what? You told me you, so. You told me so, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what advice would you give to people who are watching this who, number one, who don't have a mentor, yes. and number two, um, who have a mentor but they're not getting the results that they um, have set out to achieve? Um, okay. Okay, first, first of all, mm -hmm. if you don't have a mentor yeah. um, and you want to, well, two things, I suppose. You, you inside, as an individual, you're going to have um, what I call it an inner voice mm. and the inner voice is going to say to you you can be such and such mm. um, trust it mm. because you know inside I believe inside mm. we know mm. that something is right yeah, yeah? Um, if you're fortunate and you you look around your circles and you do have someone who perhaps could become a mentor mm. well um, I would say befriend that person mm -hmm. um, ask them if they give you some help. Is that what you did when you first started? Um, what did I do? Well, actually, when I, when I first, <laughs> off gain off track, when I first started, um, uh, I w it was just an invitation <laughs> of, of some <coughs> friends to go down to a track. Mm. And um, they had already engaged with probably one of the best sprints coaches at the time. Mm. And but across the way, mm. across the, the other side of the track, mm. there was another guy, mm. and I watched him. Mm. And I saw that everything that he did, one, he could demonstrate, mm. and two, no matter if something went wrong, he, he always encouraged you. Mm. And after a three, month to three to four month period, I actually realized that was the guy that I wanted to work with. Mm -hmm. And his name was Richard Jesse. Mm -hmm. And um, from working with Richard, you know, in a very short space of time, mm. you know, I improved maybe three meters. What? Oh, wow. Yeah. And so that as well, that then backed what I was talking about, having that trust and that knowing that you could, in an environment, that you could seek out the expertise. But, that you but what was the difference? How do you go from like nothing to like three meters in a short, such a short space of time? Just from... Um, Oh, that's a lot. I mean, it's not a small. No, I mean, we're not talking about a couple of centimeters. Well, obviously, I, 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 you know, you have to have. A, you would have had to have a little bit of talent. Mm. Yeah, um, but he had this underlying 
um, way of just giving you confidence, mm. you know. And also, his big thing was always, what does it feel like? Mm. Yeah. And back then there was no video cameras, so mm. you can, you know, it was all about positions. Mm -hmm. And you jump, you come out of the pit, and say to you, "What do you feel?" Mm. That's what he'd say to me. And I'd say to him, "Well, I felt like I stood up a little bit more, or I, you know, um, I brought the leg a little bit closer. My body was a little bit more upright." Yeah. And he'd give you these key pointers, and they would help. Mm. And the other thing that he used to do was he'd only cue one thing. So rather than, and the mistake that loads of people do is they all give you loads of things to think about. Mm -hmm. But in actual fact, you only need to think about one key thing, mm -hmm. you know, and that one th key thing is going to enable you to perhaps jump a long distance or run faster or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever, or perform mm -hmm. on the day. Mm -hmm. So what was that one thing for you then? Um, for me, uh, back then, my tendency was to slightly over-rotate, you know, and carry my um, chest forward mm -hmm. and then thus my head would go forward mm -hmm. and I'd slide, and I'd lose, lose distance because obviously gra your head going forward gravity just bring you straight down. Wow. So by just holding up my chest and my, my head mm -hmm. at that young age, mm -hmm. uh, it enabled me to improve. Wow, that's mm -hmm. amazing. You know, before we start this interview, you, you said that you would find um, um, other coaches as well and you'd see how they, you, you would raise a question of, I want to be the best and you said to me that when you asked that question, something inside changes and you start searching for the answers. Yeah, you, you, you know, you back then um, you do your own research. Mm -hmm. So back then it was the, f for me anyway, it was an, an encyclopedia, mm. the uh, triple jump encyclopedia. There's actually an encyclopedia? Yeah, for triple <laughs> jump. And in there yeah. uh, was the methodology of how to triple jump. Yeah. Uh, and um, back then the 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 main athletes, or the main athletes in the world, was um, Viktor Saniev. Mm -hmm. He was a big time triple jumper. He won mm -hmm. three Olympic gold medals mm -hmm. and I think he won a silver mm -hmm. in Moscow. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a young man coming through, or teenager, that was my idol. I wanted to be like Viktor Saniev. Yeah. yeah. And then Di Oliveira, a Brazilian, he had the world record. Mm -hmm. um, but funny enough, in the UK, we had our own little bubble going on. So right. you had the likes of Frank Atto and Aston Moore. Then after Aston Moore came a guy called Keith Connor. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I first met Keith Connor, I was like, wow, I want to be <laughs> like him, mm -hmm. you know, because he had all these attributes. Mm -hmm. And um, so the first thing I did was befriended Keith Connor. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you don't live in the UK, where are you based? And he was based in uh, um, Texas, wow. SMU University, yeah. with his coach, who was his school teacher. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the two of them had gone to the States. Mm -hmm. And Keith, um, by the time I met him, was already NCAA's champion. Mm -hmm. And um, in the, I think in the first two years of me actually getting to know him, mm. he became European, um, European. I think no, world record holder for the triple jumper, wow. for the triple jump, European champion. He'd already run Commonwealth Games mm -hmm. uh, twice, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, by the end of his career, he he'd won a bronze medal um, at the LA Olympics for wow. for triple jump. Yeah. But what what I was doing was he had the knowledge, mm -hmm. and. I had to find out, learn from his experiences, mm. share some new experiences, mm -hmm. and take that knowledge and then apply it to myself. Mm. And what that led to was um, Keith and I, we went to Australia mm -hmm. for um, what we call warm weather training. Yeah. And we hooked up with another triple jumper called um, Ken Loraway, who was a, a world-class 17 meter triple jumper at the mm -hmm. time. Um, engaged with their coach as well. Mm. new training theories, bring yeah. that back, take the bits that you liked yeah. and then apply them to yourself. So you did almost like what Bruce Lee did. Bruce Lee would go out and look at all these different martial artists mm. and he would take the best from every single one. Yeah. And that's why he became one of the, you know, the, the best, I guess, most famous uh, uh, martial artists in the world. Yeah, correct. So, so what is it that, that he did differently that, that you, because when you befriended him, you're like, wow, you, like, you saw something there. It's almost like, you can you can see the talent mm. 
I mean, what what was this person doing? I mean, those those credentials are I mean, <laughs> well, impressive. Well, what 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 I've noticed, mm. you know, I mean, we talked about you know earlier we were talking about Jade and yeah. Phillips. Yeah. But what I, what I've noticed is that that um, people who elite athletes, mm. yeah or athletes with talent or people with talent mm. have this kind of unique way amongst themselves mm. of working out that that person that they're speaking to mm. has a certain trait or a similar trait to them, mm. yeah? And um, I could see straight away from engaging with Keith Connor. I mean, at the time, yeah, he was, um, his PB was probably a meter mm. ahead of mine. Wow. So he had to be doing, he had to have an experience or be experienced in certain things that mm. I hadn't experienced. Yeah. And it was my intention to try and find out, well, mm. what is he doing different to me? Mm. Is he doing something different in his training? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, is there something that I'm not doing in my training? And my objective was to find out, well, what is that? Mm. Yeah. And by being in the same environment, environment as him and sharing um, time where you're training, you could kind of ex assess for yourself. Mm. So if we were doing a similar exercise, I don't know, um, cleans or, yeah. or a snatch. Mm. If I'm cleaning 30K yeah. and he's cl cleaning 70K, yeah. straight away I know there's a difference there. Yeah, so but, but is, that not, is, that not down, is that not down to physical ability and strength? Y yes, it is. Mm. But how are you gonna, how are you gonna assess mm. your physical ability and strength unless mm you can pair yourself to someone else, mm. you know? Um, and that's what elite athletes will do. Mm. You know, they will look around and they will compare, each other, compare themselves with each other. Mm. Well, that person's taller than me. Yeah. Or they'll look for someone who's similar height, similar yeah. weight, you know, and yeah. assess yeah. Where, the, where, they st where they stand up against that person. Mm. And, if, and usually, you know how it is, when, when you are an elite performer, mm. if someone's done something mm. and you're similar to that person mm. and you're already trying to get to excellence yeah. you're going to say to yourself I'm going to try and do the same thing mm. and you're going to push the boundaries mm. and then sometimes what happens you get two people who come together yeah. like gladiators who yeah. have done the training yeah. um, they're both slaves to the technique mm -hmm. and on the day something magical happens mm. yeah because at the end of the day when you get to, the other thing is, you, when you get to an elite level, mm. it isn't, ju isn't just that you're just talented, <coughs> you're a slave to the technique. Mm. And by, because repetition, 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 mm. you're, because you're a slave to technique, mm. you, when you apply it, that's when you get a great performance. Wow. Because the, cause of the, cause you've got all these, in, you've, got, you've got stress, um, you've got, um, you've, on the day you've, you, you're going to experience having high energy, yeah. all these bits and pieces. Mm. Spiritually, mm. you're going to be on top. Mentally, you're going to be on top. Mm. And with that combination, when two people come together mm. for that carrot, yeah. say Olympic gold medal, yeah. whatever, what happens is there's always a great performance. So what, so what was that one thing that, that he was doing differently and you thought, wow? Yep. And it's like you just noticed it, like stuck out like a sore thumb. What yep. was that one thing? He, he had a step phase. He had a great step phase. Um, and still up to this day, mm. you know, whatever recordings you see back then, it's film and vi you know, it was early video. Yeah. When you do see him actually competing, yeah. that's the one key thing that steps out, uh, that, that, that um, shows out. Yeah. And for most triple jumpers, mm -hmm. the triple jumpers that actually get out there, yeah. as we say, yeah. usually have a great step jump phase. Wow. Forget the hop. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, it was interesting because it, I mean, it really takes um, a master of the skill to be able to spot that. I mean, would you say people who are not competing at that level could could not see it, or was it would it was something that's really obvious? Um, no, I think it's I think it's obvious. Mm. Back then, it was very very obvious, mm. um, and I and I do believe that people can can see that. Mm. You know, like I said back in the day, um, everything was more about. Um, what you saw and feeling, mm. yeah. So yeah, definitely. Uh, let's go back to your gold medal. <laughs> Did you know that you were going to win that gold medal? Um, comp uh, yes. How? Um, pre through preparation. 
the, the, the previous, I have, to, I have to dial back because it's yeah. like some time now. Yeah. So in, in 1986, um, I had, uh, so in 85, mm -hmm. I did finish my, um, I did a degree, degree in graphic design. Yeah. 84, mm -hmm. I took time out of um, university. Mm -hmm. 85, I, I think I jumped to PB of, I went to Kobe and jumped to PB of 1741. Wow. Um, and won the Europa Cup, but the, <coughs> the season was kind of cut short because I was back at back mm. at university. Mm. So the following year, which was '86, yeah. I'd said to myself, um, "A, I need to find a job," mm. which I did. <laughs> and by Christmas, the travelling up and down mm. for me um, going to work, mm. I had had enough of it. So mm. I made the decision: okay, you're going to train full time. Wow. Um, so, so just, just stop, let me stop right there. That's a big decision. Mm. You should train full time. I mean, what, what steps, I mean, what was going through your mind when you said, I'm, I'm just going to jump to train full time? Because, because I, was in, I was going to work, yeah. coming from work, and was tired. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd, I'd get back from, from hitching probably about mm. 7 o'clock yeah. after starting out at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So you go through the whole day. Yeah. Um, and uh, back then, you know, where I was working, they had me doing, uh, uh, do you remember bromides? I don't know if you remember no. bromides, bro <laughs> anyway, back in the, in the dark room, so it was very, very hot. Yeah. And I just got fed up with it. And I said, you know what, this is not what I want to do. Mm. You know, what I want to do is I want to become, uh, I want to remain a world-class athlete. Mm. And, uh, and this, you know, eight, 86 was Commonwealth Games, mm. and I'd already gone to the Commonwealth Games four years prior to that mm. as a youngster and had missed out, mm -hmm. you know. And I said, you know what? It's at home, it's in Edinburgh. I'm just going to focus on that. So I told my parents. Um, I then moved, moved home. I went and lived in my coach's house. Mm -hmm. um, and every day, just get, wake up, have my breakfast, go to training, do my first session, come back, have a sleep, then go back and do your second session. And just worked out a plan, you know, towards that, what I call that TX, you know, that, that day, you know, and just worked backwards. How, how, how do you keep that discipline? Because again, a lot, a lot of people watching this, they, you know, they're watching this thinking, my God, that's like, you've got to be superhuman to do that. You know, there's got to be something inside you, and a lot of people make this excuse of, well, it's okay for you, John, because you know you're you. You know, for me, it's different because my experiences are different. I mean, what what's your view on that? Well, the thing is, I mean, I, I think normal people kind of look at sports people and say, you know, how do you do that? Mm. And maybe we are lunatics, and <laughs> and, and it is you know, training can be addictive, mm. but. Like I said earlier, you know, you, you, you set these goals, mm. you know, that because you, in, internally you think, you know what, you've, you've made a decision, you think, okay, I can do this thing mm. better than anyone else, mm. yeah. And my objective then was that you wanted to jump further than anybody else, mm. or just as far as anybody else had jumped, mm. yeah. Um, we were coming into, back then we were coming into times where um, money was beginning to come into the sport, mm. so you could make a little bit of cash mm -hmm. from sponsorships. Because mm -hmm. um, you got to look at it, it was it was a means and a ways of yes, you wanted to be the best in the world, but you were travelling the world because you're going to major championships, mm -hmm. you're going to Grand Prix, so mm -hmm. you you know you got it gave you an opportunity to meet new people, mm. experience new cultures. There's mm. all these different things that. Mm come that came from it mm. um, the um, notoriety of being a world-class athlete you know those bits and pieces mm. and also competing for the you know for the UK mm. you know that was a big thing then you know mm. you that you were a member of the Great Britain team you know mm. all these bits and pieces mm. all added to it mm. you know but just the internal drive that you wanted to be the best mm. you know, and that's that's your motivation Did See, this is interesting because if you look at Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods had this saying of, you know, he didn't want to be the best golfer um, in the world. He wanted to be, be, to be the best golfer that ever lived. Yeah. And that, that mindset, that internal dialogue that, that you say to yourself, 
gives you a completely different outcome. That's why I asked you about the decision because, you know, I've, I've, I've interviewed quite a few um, athletes now and it's, it's the same thing. Mm. Like the best of what they do, they make this decision and it's almost like they made this commitment to do it and, and nothing else, like nothing else matters. This is what I'm going to do and they stay laser focused. Yeah, it, 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 I, the, the term that I use nowadays is if you want to be the best, it's a lifestyle. Mm. Yeah. It isn't something that you can just rock up to. Mm. It's a lifestyle and, and it starts in the morning, you know, with your nutrition. Or some people in the morning they might get up, have a shower, meditate. Mm. Or the other way around, you mm. know, so you do your visualization in the morning. You, you visualize as well? Uh, I, yes, I have done. I, wow. do, I do. When I have a goal, yeah. I, I need to see it, wow. you know. And because I come from a creative background anyway, mm. you know, most of the time, before I set out, I can see the goal that I want to achieve mm. and then I work backwards mm. and then you put the plan. Mm. So, you know, for an athlete, their plan could be, for, it could be a year, two years, three, four, um, four years and you just work it all the way back. Mm. And most, most people who put together a periodization plan, mm. you know, they can tell you roughly any time, any week, of any month in the year, mm. what they're doing or where they're going to be. <laughs> yeah, it's that detail. <coughs> That's yeah. crazy. And even the, in terms of um, for a particular session, how many runs they're going to do, the recovery between the runs, uh, or if it's a weight session, mm. how many reps they're going to do, um, the recovery between the reps, and so forth. It's that detailed. It's that detailed. Wow. In, ter in, ter in, in terms of nutrition, yeah. You know, depending on what type of person you're working with, because mm. it, it does vary, mm. you know. Um, but if it's a, a world class athlete, mm. you know for a fact that on a cellular level, you know, it's going to be green tea, they're going to be um, more alkali than acid, mm. they're going to have uh, a recovery program, you know, um, after they finish the training session. They're going to have. A, uh, they're going to take some supplements, yeah. or they're going to eat something where they can recover yeah. quickly. Because it's yeah. all about doing the work, yeah, yeah, um, fatiguing the muscles, and recovery. Mm. Yeah, rest, come back, do mm. it again. And depending on what you want in each session, you will have a goal going into the session, mm -hmm. and then assess whether or not you achieve the goal coming mm. out of the session. Is, 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 that, is that why you think, uh, and there's a lot of people, and especially when it comes to New Year, they go, I'm going to set a goal, I'm going to achieve this, and next year comes and they go, it's the same goal. Yeah. And then you have the same goal. So why do you think that when people set this goal, they're, they're not able to achieve that goal? Um, well, one, mm. when does the year start? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. my year doesn't start in January, my year yeah. starts in September. Right. Which is similar to when we were at school. Yeah. 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 Um, but no, I, I, I think sometimes people don't achieve goals because the goal that they set is too far away. Mm. Yeah. If you set a goal and you can just touch it, yeah. then the chances are you're going to attain it. Yeah. Yeah. And then once you've touched that, you shift, you yeah. move it slightly further. Mm. And that you can do that. Mm. You can do that within um, you can do that within a training session, mm -hmm. or you could do that within a competition. Mm. Um, it just depends on where you set the goal. So what I wh what I tend to do is um, set a goal that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And I will say, and I also change what the goal is. Mm -hmm. So if we're working on something technical, let's say, yeah. and someone's got a problem with, you know, like I did when I was a kid, yeah. keeping my head head up, yeah. my chest up. The goal in the session is if we're doing eight practice jumps, mm. yeah, mm -hmm. I want you to keep your chest up four mm -hmm. times. Right. Yeah? Yeah. Because that's that could be achieved. Yeah. Yeah. Or even we may even, I may even say do it once. From once we go to okay, let's do try let's try and attain that another two yeah. times. And by the time you get because they're focused on what they're supposed to be doing mm. and you set the you change the goal. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not distance led or, yeah. or, or whatever, they'll achieve it. Uh. Now, what you need to do is that needs to become bug in bucket, mm -hmm. standard. Mm -hmm. Every time, technically, mm -hmm. you can do that. Mm -hmm. Then once you've got that, you move on to something else. It might mm -hmm. be the free leg, it might be the landing and the hop. Mm -hmm. And once you just 
similar, similar, similar. Mm. Once you keep doing that thing, the methodology is um, if someone's got a bad habit mm. or a virus, mm. Mm -hmm. um, you get rid of that habit, mm. you get rid of that virus, and you make standard practice a good mm. habit. So yeah. under stress, yeah. you can attain what you yeah. need to attain because yeah. you've got a good habit. So are you, are you saying to people who are watching this and you know, they're going through life and they're not achieving their goals, are you, are you saying that they should focus on Instead of so focus on ten things at once, they focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. They master it, and then they then move, move on. on. Yes, wow. correct. And that way, one, you, you're going to feel good about yourself because mm. you've actually achieved one thing, mm. right? It's realistic, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Rather than you know, you're here, you're here, you're here. You're trying to get all these different things. Mm. Well, okay. If those are um, jelly babies, yeah. yeah flavour jelly baby are you going to get? Yeah. yeah? No, okay, I decided I'm going to go for the black jelly baby or the red jelly baby and just attain that. Next time I'm going to get the green. Yeah. Next time I'm going to get the yellow. <laughs> you know, and do it like, you know, yeah. do it in stages mm -hmm. and then you will achieve, I think you will achieve what you, you're supposed to achieve. Wow. You know? So what's, what's I mean, for, for someone watching this, what's the biggest, like, if you could go back in time and give yourself advice or you know, based on all the lessons you've learned to where you are now, what's one piece of advice you can give to somebody watching this that would dramatically improve their life? Um, to stand still and be patient. Wow. Yeah, because as a as a as a young man, mm -hmm. um, I could have been a, been a little bit more patient. I think yeah. you know. Um, that would be the key thing for me. You know, Liz said exactly the same thing. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, I asked yeah. her the same question. And she said, w when she was on court, she was losing points. I said, what was the turning points in which, you know, in games where you were losing and you turned it around and the games where you were winning and then you, did, and then, and then you lost the game? And she said to you, you know, Johnny, you just got to be patient. Yeah, you slow, you, you know, you, you learn how to, and that's the one, one thing that, through my own experience, mm -hmm. and then working with elite people, mm -hmm. You know, when everybody else is rushing, yeah, that's the one key thing that I say to them: slow it down. Yeah, because you got the, you know where you are in the back of the head. You know you're at the Olympic Games. Yeah, yeah, um, and you're seeing people panicking, mm -hmm. and as a result, you know that fear factor comes yeah. in, into you, and you might start to panic. Yeah, and I just say to them: no, slow down. Just slow down. Yeah. Just slow, slow down, and be in the moment. Yeah. And usually, by them doing that, they then get the result that they want. You know, I'll give you a little story. I remember um, uh, Jay Johnson. Yeah. And we were in Beijing, uh -huh. and it'd been a rocky road getting to <laughs> to Beijing, and yeah. um, we were in the qualifying, uh -huh. and uh, she's had two no jumps. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I could see on her face, you know, she was almost white as a sheet. She was uh -huh. like, "Oh my God." It's like I'm going to go out, yeah. and she'd watched the leading, um, one of the leading jumpers at the time in the world, mm -hmm. go out, mm -hmm. you know, and she'd she'd jogged the she'd jogged across and watched the girl jump, and yeah. it was on the big screen, and yeah. you could see she got a red flag, yeah, three no jumps, yeah, and Jed had one more jump, and she looked at me, and I looked at her, and I just went, slow down, slow everything down, first four. And she just, you, you see her just gulp. Yeah. And she went back and she just slowed everything down. Mm. Qualified for the final, you know? It, you have to be in the moment, mm. you know? You have to be in the moment. You know, John, it's been amazing. I could sit here all day and listen to your, mm. your wealth of, of knowledge and, and experience and, 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 and not and this experience of excellence. Mm. You know, that's, that's what I love about the way that you do. And, you know, for, for people watching this, you know, if they want to know more about you, if they want to get in touch with you, is, is, do you have a, a site that they can go to? I don't, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a site, yeah. but... Um, or a Facebook page or a Twitter? No, I don't, I don't do Facebook. Huh? I don't do Twitter. Wow. But if, if you want my email address, yeah. I can, it's johnherbert62 yeah. at yeah. me.com. Wow, excellent. I, I'm, and we'll put that on the screen as well so we can get that. And I think if anyone watching this, they, they want to get to the elite level, the excellence level, then I highly recommend that they work with you because you know, you, you, you've been there, you've done that, you've got the t-shirt, you know what it is, you've trained other people how to get that level of excellence. So, John, I want to thank you for your time, for being here. It's been an, an honour having you here and I'm really 
listen to these pearls of wisdom. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank and I really you. hope that I can get you on to some of our next shows. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you. Awesome. Best.